We are Robotics for Space Exploration, and we're back again to represent the University of Toronto at the URC 2018. Our team consists of over 40 undergraduate students, and with the help of our new sponsors, we're more excited than ever to present to you our latest rover design. Over the past four years at the URC, we've always designed a rover from scratch to create an innovative solution, but this year we've decided to take a purely iterative approach to focus more on testing right away. Building off the successful design of our Phoenix rover from last year, we present to you our latest and greatest rover, Phoenix 2.0. Our mechanical system this year proved to be extremely robust to all of the URC tasks, so we're iterating on the same rocker bogey system with the differential bar to maximize the rover stability and allow for the chassis to remain level with the ground at all times. The rocker bogey linkages are water jet cut out of 2D aluminum profiles, and this year we've opted to lengthen the rocker linkage to allow the rover to survive 1 meter high drops. We're also reiterating on our polyurethane wheels from our sponsors at Talmolder, which were highly successful in providing lightweight wheels that can conform to given terrain. This year, we're improving the design by using a stickier polyurethane resin to allow for even more traction for the rover's wheels. Their casings also provide a safe enclosure for our motors, making our drive system extremely robust to environmental shocks. Our chassis consists of custom aluminum extrusions, allowing for easy mounting of our arm and science tool modules. Using a laser cutter, we've also constructed our custom-made acrylic battery bay, which is vertically attached to the rover's main power systems. This design improvement allows for quicker powering of the rover, as well as space preservation for our onboard electronics. Last year, we introduced our very own custom printed circuit boards using EvilCAD software. This year, we decided to combine several functional components together on each PCB to save space and weight in our chassis. We're also putting a greater emphasis on safety, using Hall Effect sensors to monitor our motor's current draw in real time, and relays to shut off each motor remotely from our ground station. We're working closely with our sponsors Fisher and Molex Connectors who are providing us with robust plug-and-play connectors to provide easy connections between our electronic components. To improve the testability of our rover's electrical systems, we're also using only one layer of electronics, which will only include our drive, power, and communication systems. Our software system will be very similar to last year. We're using a web stack, namely React and Node.js, so that our different software subsystems can be connected in any programming language. We've switched to using Serial to communicate between our Arduino microcontrollers, and this year we've opted to use a Raspberry Pi instead of a laptop for all of our onboard computations for our autonomy components. Video and telemetry is handled by a 2.4GHz wireless connection between our parabolic dish and our rover's antenna. For the 2.4 connection, we have a high-gain directional antenna at the ground station that lets us communicate up to 20 kilometers while autonomously tracking the rover. Our autonomous system is built around both coarse and fine grain control. For coarse, we use GPS coordinates of the destination and the rover to reach a goal. For fine, we use a relative positioning system to move closer to the destination, using OpenCV to calibrate our 3D IP camera's intrinsic and extrinsic parameters to calculate distance and heading of a tennis ball. We're also using our 3D LiDAR from our sponsors at SCANS for obstacle detection. So far, our system has been tested in a simulation environment to refine our computer vision, path planning, and path tracking algorithms on last year's rover Phoenix as our testbed. Our rover's arm uses aluminum linkages connected in a 6 degree of freedom configuration. This year, we are using high-torque, lightweight DC motors and linear actuators with rotary encoders to control each joint angle of our arm, high precision. Using our highly successful inverse kinematics algorithms from last year, we are able to control the arm intuitively using a 6 degree of freedom joystick, allowing the end effector to quickly move towards its desired goal poles. Our science systems have been overhauled the most this year. We now have a sub-team dedicated solely to science, making us more prepared than ever for the science cache analysis task. Instead of attaching our drill directly to our arm, we're creating an independent science tool that can be mounted directly to the rover's chassis. Building off the success of our science suite from last year, we're reusing the same on-site sensors to measure soil moisture, a variety of gases, and temperature, all for the purpose of gauging the signs of life. Our off-site analysis tools will include pH sensors, a digital microscope to detect signs of lichen, as well as our upgraded DIY spectrometer, which will be used for measuring chlorophyll concentrations in the soil. With access to a new testing facility at the University of Toronto, we've managed to conduct a comprehensive number of unit and system level tests that have been tailored specifically to the URC 2018 tasks. Using our old Phoenix rover as a testbed, we've successfully tested the rover to navigate towards GPS coordinates in preparation for the autonomous traversal task. For the extreme retrieval task, we've also tested our drive system's new rocker bogey to verify that it is now able to survive high drops, as well as our arm to the loads up to 5 kilograms. Moving on to the equipment servicing task, we've also run extensive load tests by dragging a dynamically weighted cart system to verify the arm's lateral strength. We've also managed to successfully test our new science tool, demonstrating that it is able to extract soil samples deeper than 10 centimeters and compile them securely in our collector mechanism. Now that we have successfully completed all of our unit and system testing in our local site, we're now ready to continue testing in our fully enclosed 1100 meter squared Mars dome at the Institute for Aerospace Studies. RSX would like to thank our sponsors for all of their support. We're thrilled to show you what we have in store with Phoenix 2.0, and we can't wait to compete in the URC 2018.